Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is question number three from the June 2018, the GCE paper, the um, old specification 6677. Um, this is M1. And here we have a question about moments. It says a wooden beam AB of mass 150 kilograms and length nine meters rests in a horizontal position supported by two vertical ropes. The ropes are attached to, B <coughs> to the beam at C and D where AC is 1.5 meters and BD is 3.5 meters. A gymnast of mass 60 kilograms stands on the beam at the point P, where AP is 3 meters, as shown in figure 2. The beam remains horizontal and in equilibrium. By modeling the gymnast as a particle and the beam as a uniform rod and the ropes as light in its extensible strings find the tension in the rope attached to the beam at C. So one of the important points here is the fact they've called this a uniform rod. A uniform rod is a, um, you know, a uniform object is, is where the center of mass is right in the geometric center of the beam. So this is nine meters long. So exactly 4.5 meters in, halfway in, will be the, the weight, the weight of the beam will act. So that's the first thing I'm going to put here, right halfway along from the end of the beam so that's like 4.5 meters okay so i could do something like this i could say from here to here is 4.5 meters okay that's where the weight is acting and the weight well the mass of the beam is 150 kilograms so that's 150 times g that's the weight so that's the force acting the weight of the beam and that's as we said 4.5 meters from there to there then you have the weight of the gymnast the gymnast has a weight of 60 kilograms so so a mass of 60 kilograms sorry so a weight of 60 g newtons so 60 g is the weight of the gymnast 60 kilograms mass that's right and that's 3p that's already uh, that three meters that's already marked um and those are the only, well, you've got, of course, you've got the tensions in the ropes. Tension at C and tension at D. Okay, so this is TC and this is TD. Okay, so that's the tension in the ropes. So that's everything that we need to know for this. It's an equilibrium. All right, so we need to find the tension in the rope attached to the beam at C. Okay, so we've got to find the tension in the rope at C. That's what we've got to find. Now, what we can do is, as we have two things that we don't know, okay, we have the tension at C and the tension at D. Both of them are unknowns. So there's two unknowns here. All right. Um, and we know this thing is an equilibrium. I can take, I can choose to take moments about any point that I would wish to. I can take moments about A, about C, about D, about P, about B, about a, even a point outside of the shape. As, I, as long as I know how far away it is from these points, I can take the moments about any point I wish and the, the clockwise moments and the anticlockwise moments about any point is going to equal zero because this object is in equilibrium. So if I want to find the tension at C, that's one unknown and I need that to be in my equation. Right? If I take moments about D, that will cause me to have a zero moment about D. If I take moments about D, then the tension at D is acting through that point, so the turning effect of that force will be zero. So I can ignore the tension at D if I take moments about D. Okay, so taking moments, okay, taking moments about D. I'm taking moments about D. So I've got to think about all the forces acting and how far they are from D. So let's think about the clockwise forces. The clockwise force, if we take D as the place we're taking moments about, then this would have a clockwise effect. Now somebody was asking, why can't we take a horizontal moments? Or I don't understand what he's trying to say. Clock moments are either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, they're not vertical or horizontal. They're clockwise or anti-clockwise. And to find the moment of a force about a certain point, you find you, you take the, the magnitude of that force and multiply by the perpendicular distance of that force from the point you're taking moments about. So here I'm going to take this distance between these two points, uh, which is going to be 
that distance there. That's what I need. The distance between D and C. So how do I find that distance? Well, what we can say is that's 9. That's 3.5. That's 1.5. So 3.5 plus 1.5 is 5. 9 minus 5 is 4. So this must be 4 meters. That's 1.5. That's 5.5 plus 3.5, that's 9, that's correct. So that's 4 meters. So the clockwise moments about D are going to be 4 times TC. So 4 times the tension at C. And that's equal to the anti-clockwise moments about D because it's an equilibrium. And these two forces are anti-clockwise. That's the only clockwise force. So you've got here about D, you've got this force here, this distance here. Now we've got to work out what that distance is. Let's look at some of these things you've got. Um, this is 3.5 meters. The whole thing is 9 meters. This is 4.5. So that's 4.5 and that's 3.5. That makes 8. So that distance must be basically just 1 meter. That's 1 meter between there and there. Okay, so that's 1 meter. So you've got 1 times 150. So you have 1 times 150 G, sorry. 1 times 150 G. Um, that's this moment. And then we got to find the distance between this weight and D. Okay, so what's the distance between them? Well, I know that, um, let's have a look. This is 3 meters, and this is 3.5 meters. So 3 plus 3.5 is 6.5. And so what we've got left, we've got 2.5 meters. So this is 2.5 meters, because 3 plus 2.5 is 5.5. 5.5 plus 3.5 is 9. So that's 2.5 meters between D and this point here. So we can say plus, you're going to have 2.5 multiplied by 60 G. Okay, so we can see here, we can find what the tension in C is. It's going to be basically, if I, if I calculate this, I'm going to leave things in terms of G for now. So I'll have um, 150 plus 2.5 times 60. That gives me 300, so that's 300. So we can say T, T, 300G, sorry, 300G. So TC is 300 divided by 4. That gives me 75G newtons. So we can leave our answer like this. If we wish to, we can also multiply by 9.8. And that gives us 735 newtons. We can write it like that. We can even write this as 7. 140 newtons to 2SF if you want to as well. I prefer to leave it in terms of G. That's perfectly fine. So there we have the answer to question number um, 3, part A. Now for part B. It says the gymnast at P remains on the beam at P. And another gymnast who is also modeled as a particle stands on the beam at B. Okay, the beam rests horizontal or remains horizontal and in equilibrium. The mass of the gymnast at B is the largest possible for which the beam remains horizontal and in equilibrium. Find the tension in the rope attached to the beam at D. So there's very important little points here to make. Okay, so I've put a gymnast here, another gymnast here at B. Okay, so let's look at this question. Let's first put the forces in. We know that this is again 4 G. Uh, sorry, 150 G, which is exactly halfway along. It's a uniform beam. We know this is 60 G newtons. This is the uh, weight of the um, gymnast that was there already. You have the tension in these two. Now, the tension in these two are not going to be the same as before because the situation has changed now because um, there's another gymnast on here, so that's going to change everything. All right, so you got the tension at C. So I can't, I can't take the tension at C or D as what they were in the previous question. And then I've got this gymnast that's now come and changed the situation at B, and his mass we don't know, mg. Okay, so those are the forces acting on this particular um, beam now. Now what we know is very important here. The very, very, very important point here, and one of the students was asking something about this um, in one of the comments on one of my previous videos so i'm going to try to go into more detail here it says the mass of the gymnast at b is the largest possible for which the beam remains horizontal that means if his mass was any more okay what's going to happen is the beam is going to start tilting okay and what would happen is it would start tilting okay if if this mass was any more it was it's going to start going like this 
and the tension in this rope is going to become zero. Okay, because it's going to start tilting upwards like this. All right, it's going to start tilting upwards. So this would this whole thing would lift off. Okay, and the 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 beam won't be horizontal anymore. It'll look like this. Okay, and the tension in this rope therefore will become zero. Okay, it's like it's the same as if it was resting on two supports. Okay, if it was resting on two supports, it's the same situation, the same idea. Okay, and if you know it started to um, if if you put some weight on here that's so heavy uh, that it starts to tilt, then what's going to happen is it's going to lift. It's gonna it's gonna lift off this support. It's gonna tilt, so it's it's gonna you know be on this support. But this will lift up eventually if that weight is too big. So the reaction here there will be you know will lift off from that support at the point at which it's just about to lift up from that support. You know the point that's you know the the at which it's just about to lift off. If there was the weight here was any bigger, or if the person was standing any further along, it would lift up. Then it's still in equilibrium, it hasn't tilted yet, but the reaction at that support, that's going to have a zero, yeah, that the support is going to become zero, basically. So we know that, you know, the, for, for M, for the, for the um, gymnast to have the mass, okay, for the gymnast at B, the gymnast at B to have the maximum possible mass, maximum mass for a b to be in equilibrium in, in equilibrium then that's when the that's when td has to so sorry the tension at c has to equal zero Okay, that's when tension at C has to equal zero. So when the tension at C is zero, okay, that's when you're going to have this person have the maximum possible mass. It's just about to lift up. It's just about to tilt, and it will tilt about D. Okay, it will lift up, and it will tilt about D. So we have here two unknowns, all right? One of the unknowns is the mass of the person the new gymnast and the other unknown is the tension in d now we're asked to find here the tension in the rope attached to the beam at d okay so i could find the mass first if i wanted to if i took moments about d then the clockwise moments equal the anti-clockwise moments this moment this is equal to zero now so we can discount that because the, the turning effect of, of course of course will be zero so, so we could find the mass first and then once we found the mass we can then add these three together and that will be equal to the tension because the tension upward forces are equal to the downward forces. And th this is zero, so all of the, you know, the, all of the upward forces will be in this tension and this rope. But that would be a bit longer because we're not asked to find the ten we're not asked to find the mass of the person. So if I took moments about B, okay, then I have again just one unknown and I find directly what I need to find. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take moments about B. And take moments about B, okay, and that way I will have so I will be able to have one unknown and find exactly what I need to find. So we need to know some of these distances again between these um, objects. So, for example, I need this distance here, I need this distance there, and I also need this distance here, which I already have actually. That's fine, okay. So I can see the clockwise moments about this B is going to be the tension in D. That's 3.5. 3.5 times the tension in D. That's the clockwise moments. That's equal to the anti-clockwise moments will be these two. If this is the pivot, it's going to have anti-clockwise effect. So I have this distance here. Well, now, what's that distance over there? Well, that's exactly 4.5 meters because this is, you know, halfway along. That's where the mass is, the weight's acting from the end of the beam. So that's going to be 4.5 times 150 g plus and then i've got this distance here which is basically um, 9 minus 3 which is 6 meters so it's going to be 6 times 60 g 6 times 60 g and that's what's going to give us the tension in d and that will be our answer so let's work out what that is i'll like i'll work out in terms of g so i have one 4.5 times 150 
that's 675 g plus 360 g 6 times 6 is 36 okay um that's 3.5 times the tension in d now let's work out what this is that's 1035 g so we can say the tension in d is 1035 g divided by 3.5 so the tension in d is equal to it's equal to 2070 over 7 g okay so that's the answer to this question and um, we can leave it in terms of g like this if we want to all right not going to round very nicely leave it like this or we could write it as multiply this by so we take uh, multiply this by 9.8 and that gives us 2898 so the tension in d is 2898 newtons which you should really round to 3sf if you're going to write it in in that form that will be 2000 and 2900 newtons you could also write it as well to, to two both two two sf and three sf will give us that one time because if i do it to three sf that's become it can become a 10 so we, yeah 2900 newtons you can leave your answer like this you can even leave your answer in terms of g just like the previous question the previous past part of the question i could have left my answer as in terms of g or in terms of um you know without g just multiplying by g both are fine Okay, so that's the answer to question part B. I hope that was clear. Okay, um, the, the important for you to realize that basically, at for the you know the mass of this gymnast to be most to, to be as big as possible, and the beam still remain in in a horizontal position, means it remains in equilibrium. Is he has to have the maximum mass such that this beam is just about to tilt about D just uh, on the verge of tilting about d in which case the tension at c will therefore be zero just like as if they these ropes and these supports are treated in exactly the same way in that sense okay so that's a really important concept there all right so i hope that was clear and um you know other questions from this paper june 2018 from the gce syllabus can be found in the playlist over here other questions from this topic of moments can be found in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link in the middle and you can also find other links to other papers the other units of the the um, international a level and as and also the gce gcse sorry um igcse um links in the description you'll find some index um links to those so thank you for watching and see you soon